Hey, everybody. Welcome. How do I buy in Panama? That's the question you keep asking yourself. A lot of people ask me, how do I buy real estate in Panama? Well, guess what? You don't even need to be a resident to buy real estate in Panama. Now, the process of buying is a little different, okay? There's a few things that differentiate, for instance, a real estate transaction uh, in Panama than in North America. One of the biggies is that we actually don't have an escrow system. So when you actually buy, the money goes directly to the seller. Let me give you the three steps. The first step is you're going to make a formal offer. This is where you say, okay, I'm going to pay this much for this property in this amount of time. This is a non-binding agreement. Okay. The offer is definitely not binding. However, from that is where the second point or the second part evolves. And when you buy into property, step number two is going to be the promise to purchase. The promise to purchase is the document that's actually going to make sure that both sides have everything they need to have a safe transaction, okay? Um, the buyer puts a, a minimum of at least 10% down, which is non-refundable. And then this money is used by the seller to pay taxes ahead of time prior to the final step. The final step is when you're actually transferring the deed over to the buyer. At that point, the seller has to show up at the notary ready with taxes already paid on the transaction. That is the reason why that 10% or that minimum of 10% is so important because otherwise the seller would have to come out of pocket in order to do the transaction. Obviously, that presents all kinds of risks. That's why the buyer has to put 10% at least to make sure that the transaction can move forward. The seller takes that money pays the government, and then he presents, hey, I've already paid the sales tax. It's 2 and 3%, by the way, 2% transfer tax, 3% capital gains. And then with that, he presents it at the moment of signing, which brings us to the third step, the actual final contract. That is signed at a notary. When the deed's being transferred to the new owner, the buyer has to put the money down on the table. However, because the transfer hasn't happened, it hasn't gone through the public registry, the money, that money, okay, in the form of either a check or an irrevocable letter of credit. That's the two ways to, I recommend, a check, a cashier's check or an irrevocable letter of credit. That's when you would hand that copy to that to the seller and somebody holds it in escrow. Who can hold it in escrow? It could be an attorney. It could be the notary. It could be your realtor. It's up to both parties to decide. Once you do the third step and everybody signs at the, not at the notary and everything's done, everybody's checked how the thing's going to be paid. We know that there's money that's actually being held by somebody else. Once you actually signed everything at the notary, then it goes to the public registry. That's where it actually transfers ownership. And once the public registry has it on their system, then you're the owner. It doesn't matter whether you get the deed or not. As long as you can look it up on the website for the public registry, it doesn't matter. That if, if it says your name, then you own it. And that's the important part. And that's why at that point, once it's actually registered and you can see it online, then the seller can get his cash, whether it's in the form of the cashier's check or the irrevocable letter of credit from a bank. How long does it take the process of the public registry? It depends. So, so I've seen it take six weeks, but I've also seen it take three weeks. You can actually expedite it for about $350 and it'll take between three to five days.